Hello, my name is Ron Hawks, author of Climbing the Financial Mountain. Today I'd like to show you how to use the Retirement Planning Calculator, which is one of the tools that I discuss in my book that's available for free at my website. To access the Retirement Planning Calculator, go to my website at climbingthefinancialmountain.com. Once you're at the home page, select Financial Resources, then Retirement Planning Calculator. Once you're at this page, you'll see an overview of the tool as well as a link to download this file. Please note that the section in red that states that you may be asked to enable macros or content depending on what version of Excel you have when you open the file. If you see this message when you open the file, just click on the enable message and you should be good to go. Click on the download retirement planning calculator and you'll notice that a window pops up that states to open the file. We'll select open and once you've done that Excel will open up automatically and you should be able to start entering your information. Now again this is where you would see that message regarding Enable Macros and if you do see that message you just click on uh, Enable Content. So as you can see the calculator is broken up into two separate columns. The column on the left is where you would enter data for an unmarried individual or if you are married the older married spouse. If you are married, then you would enter in the right-hand column the pertinent information for the younger spouse. So let's get started entering data. Once you go to the first box here, you'll notice that a drop-down pop-up box shows up here telling you what data should be entered. So in this case here, we're going to enter the current age. In our example here, the older spouse is 40 years old. Age of retirement, wants to retire at the age of 55. Social Security. As you can see, there's a drop-down box here, and you will select from the drop-down box the ages between 62 and 70. So let's assume 67. Pension, there's no pension in this example. And life expectancy, we'll go with the recommendation here. Assuming this person is male, we'll go with 90. Now this next section here is where you would enter in any additional income that you may receive through work or part-time job. So let's assume here that we're not going to have any part-time wages. We're retired, we're just going to enjoy life here. So obviously we would skip uh, entering the dollar amount, the age the retirement would start, the age it would stop, and any cost of living adjustment that you would get uh, each year for your part-time wages. Uh, again, we'll get to this section here on annual pension, and you'll notice that since we left the pension blank, we would leave this blank here as well there'd be no cost of living adjustment, nor would there be any pension survivor benefit. Now we get to the annual Social Security section, and let's assume that the person here has actually made the effort to contact Social Security and received an estimate of what their Social Security income will be in current dollars when they retire at the age of 67. And that information in this example is $20,000. Okay, now we'll go over to the younger spouse and enter information. Now I want to tell you that this application has a lot of fail safes in there to make sure that you enter in accurate data. So for example, if you made the mistake of trying to put in a current age of 50 for the younger spouse, a message will pop up telling you the number must be less than or equal to the current age of the older spouse. So again, it's a protection for you to make sure you enter in accurate data. We'll assume in this case the younger spouse that she is the same age as um, the older spouse, that her, she wants to retire also at the age of 55. Uh, she'll take Social Security at 70 instead of 67. Just to give a little variety here. Life expectancy, age of 92. Okay, like her husband here, she will not work in retirement, nor does she have a pension. But her Social Security benefit will be entered in based on her working uh, career. And let's assume that she's gotten uh, an estimate from Social Security and that number is $15,000 a year. Okay, now we get to the session here where we start entering in uh, data about your investments, expenses, and inflation. The first section here is your estimated retirement expenses. This can either be done by completing the retirement income statement that's on my website under financial resources or by taking 70 to 80 percent of your current expenses as an estimate. If you're within five years of retiring, I strongly urge you to take the time to estimate your retirement expenses by using the schedule that I just mentioned. 
So let's assume that you've actually gone through and you've taken the time to come up with an estimate and that number is $60,000 based on current dollars. Uh, retirement investments and savings, let's assume that your IRAs, 401ks in this example are $300,000. Okay, and your pre-retirement return here. I recommend 7%, but you have the option of putting in anywhere between 5 and 9%. I've limited it so you can't put in real crazy numbers like 30-40%. We want to get you a realistic uh, estimate here. So that's the reason why it's limited to only these numbers here. So we'll go with 7%. And post-retirement, we'll go with the recommendation of 6%. Okay, then we get to inflation. And we can put in estimates for inflation. I recommend 4%. I know it's higher than what we've been experiencing. But I do believe in the future, as I stated in my book, uh, inflation is going to escalate and we need to be prepared for it. So we'll put in 4%. So now that you've entered all the information, all you have to do is then click on Submit. Once you click on Submit, you'll notice that it spits out a number here telling you that you need to save by the time you retire $1.4 million or $4,500 a month. So if you look at that and say, that's just impossible, I can't do that. This is very easy. You just go back up here and say, you know what, maybe I need to retire a little later. How if I put in the age of 60 for myself and 60 for my spouse and rerun this? Once you rerun the numbers here, you'll notice that now you have to raise almost 1.2, but only $2,200 a month, which obviously is a lot less than the first example. Now once you've done this here, it creates an annual cash flow schedule. This is a great schedule that shows that your retirement age, both of you are 60, you will have $2.3 million saved. And then what it shows is the drawing down of your assets over your expected life. So in this case here, our expenses here are $131,000 in the first year of retirement. I know that's higher than the 60 that you entered in, but again, like I said, this is adjusted for inflation. So you get a real um, view of what inflation does to your expenses and it draws down your assets every year and as you can see the math is not as simple as taking the 2.336 minus the 131 the reason why the number is a little higher in that first year is again remember your assets are earning a return and what we put into the data input sheet was a six percent return post retirement so that's the reason why it's not as simple as just taking this number less than one point uh, hundred thirty one thousand dollars and as you can see, over your life expectancy, you'll see your expenses are increasing, but so is your Social Security, and you'll see your assets slowly start dwindling till you get to the point where the last spouse, in this case your wife, is um, she passes away at age 92, and the money is now down to zero. So this gives you a real good sense of the income that you need to set aside for retirement, and then assures you that based on these estimates here that you'll have enough money to cover not only your lifetime but your spouse's lifetime. I think this is a great tool. I think you'll definitely uh, appreciate it and be able to benefit from this data. I strongly recommend that you do this once a year because again things change and it's good to see where you stand. So that's all I have for today. Thank you for your time and if you have any questions feel free to contact me directly um, at Ron Hawks at climbingthefinancialmountain.com. Have a good day.